So welcome back, everyone. Let me get myself back to my yoga mat here. As we were saying before class, some of us have a little menagerie in the yoga room. Here's one of mine. You're comfortable right there. I got a little bit chilled this morning here in Portland. I don't know about others. Um, yesterday, I was on an outing with one of you who's in the Zoom room here, and it was hailing on the car. <laughs> and then it was sunny and warm. Uh, we were overdressed, underdressed, and then overdressed and underdressed again. Uh, so fluctuating temperatures is a good day for your favorite shawl, which is what this, this is one of them. So I'm going to continue in our work here with the endocrine system because you've been giving some positive input about your experiences. And it's also still, many people are still coming from that training module to the public classes and sensing how is it relevant and how can we keep bringing this kind of methodology into sequencing. So let's start with an upright seat, a comfortable seat. You can rest your hands in your lap. You're welcome to close your eyes. And let yourself orient to the present moment, which is greeting you and each of us equally. The present moment is also greeting the rain the grasses, the stars, the mysteries, and as well, the agonies and the beauties. So welcome yourself to arrive, to be greeted, as it were. Lengthen up through your spine and root down from your spine, sacrum, tailbone. So reach in both directions. And then allow your breathing to move up and down. You can either think of it as the structure of the spine, the breath is moving up and down just in front of the spine, or you could imagine that as the central channel. Or if you've been here for the last week of classes, you could imagine you're breathing up through the chakra system and just touching lightly along the way, the organs associated with the chakras. So the endocrine system weaving with the chakra system.
Let the breath be smooth and subtle. Since we're not in an active process right now, not a dynamic yoga pose, make the breath consistent, but also more subtle, not more dynamic. And then please bring your hands together at your heart. So the practice of yoga is a practice of self-care and self-awareness. Also a practice of recognizing there are larger forces and larger intelligence caring for each of us. We are a part of this majesty and this mystery. We are also a part of the agony and the beauty. So let's chant Asatoma Satgamaya. Please inhale. Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodma Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodma Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodma Amritam Gamaya Shanti Shanti Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari So you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands and open your eyes. So one of the practices we were doing this week, we're gonna start with, it's a hair pulling practice. Uh, so those of you who haven't done it yet, I appreciate your curiosity and willingness. So you're gonna take the hands and we'll come to the front first and get the center line of the hair. And when you pull up, you can also give a little wiggle you don't have hair, you're massaging the scalp right here. You um, grab and give a little pressure in and up. And when you tip the head side to side, you're really trying to give a massage to the scalp here. And breathe in. And you release there and then take the next layer back. So one fist full back, which is a funny way to say it, but um, I said it. So as you're pulling up, you're also going to be doing some rotating. You can twist your head, you can twist your fist a little bit side to side. And then breathe in. And then release and go back again, another handful. So somewhere, you're somewhere near like the back of the head and the top of the head. And again, giving a good squeeze and a little rotation. 
We're bringing circulation to the scalp and also you might realize that there's places of tightness on the scalp too. Now go back one more time at the back of the head and give a good squeeze, rotate your head, rotate your hand, the hand that's holding the hair. And then breathing in, and release. And then one more time, go to the base of the skull at the back. So the center, the tiny hairs at the bottom. You know, be kind. This is an amount of pressure that you put into it. And it's intended to massage the scalp, not to pull your hair out. And then breathe in and breathe out. And then come to the front near your temples. So you're gonna give a little squeeze right here and pull up and tip the head side to side, ear to ear. And see if you can notice when you tip your head down, let's say when you tip your head to the right and you pull up with the hair, even notice how the skin near your temple, your forehead, your eye, they may be responding. And then the other side, when you pull up, notice the skin near the left temple, left eye, your cheek. You release and come to the place at the sides between your temples and your ears and give a little pull. Rotate your nose left to right for this one. And you can pull up and take the ears side to side also. Notice how the skin around the face responds and then come down behind your ears at the sides. Give a little pull and again, you can take the nose side to side. I know it looks like if you're watching me, my head is hardly moving. It's because I have a firm grasp on the hair, but there is a sense of going left to right with the nose and then up and down with the ears. So left ear, right ear and so on. And now come take all of the hair that you can and gather it at the top, like a top knot, for those who use that phrase. And then when you have it all, I'm going to ask you to make one big strong squeeze here. You might need both hands to do it. And as you're squeezing, let the head improvise how does it want to move so that you're massaging your scalp. You might Notice the influence it has on your face, the skin on your face. Okay, and then take your fingers and give a little, like you're scratching the cat. <laughs> and you can do that in the center and then on the sides. Now with your fingers, we're gonna tap on the face. So what you're gonna do here, move your hair out of the way. Now you take the fingers and you tap on the forehead first. And then over to the temples. And then gently under the eyes on the cheekbones. And you might go down around the cheekbones. Your sinus cavities are behind, well, some of your sinus cavities are behind the cheeks. And then the upper lip. The sides of the lips. Below the cheekbones on the upper jaw. The lower jaw. the hinge of the jaw included. And then the chin above the lip, up the nose gently, and then the third eye. And 
and then up to the crown of the skull. And then relax and sit quietly. Now interlace your fingers and we're gonna use the ujjayi breath here. So this is familiar to most of you. It'll be just a couple of additions. Inhale, ujjayi, going up. Bring your spine into extension, so like cow pose. Exhale, keep reaching up, but gaze down. Bring the spine into a little bit of flexion, like cat pose. Then inhale to go up. Squeeze your hands down behind your head. Place the pinkies at the base of the skull. Inhale, elbows forward and up. Exhale, level off and bring the left elbow forward, right elbow up. Now, inhale, side bend to your left. Exhale, back up to your twist. Inhale to center. Exhale, side twist to your left. Inhale, side bend to your right. Exhale, twist side to your left. Inhale to center. Now this time, exhale to push up. Inhale, side bend to your left. Exhale, pull up to center. Inhale, side bend to your right. Exhale, rise up to center. And inhale to go up. Exhale, arms wide, out and down. Interlace your fingers at the small of your back. And now inhale, roll your chest and shoulders and heart open. And exhale, return to the seat where you started. And sit really still. So you can just notice now where the energy is moving in your body, what is happening. in the positions that we do where we're moving the whole body and the spine, we're generally activating all of the chakras and going up through the uh, glandular system from the reproductive organs up to the pineal gland and the pituitary. I'm just going to tie my hair up. This is not a yoga activity. I just am waiting for a haircut. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is come to all fours for table pose and put a couple variations in there. So. You will want a couple of yoga blocks for this. And those of you who need it may want padding for your knees so that you have a more comfortable table pose. So let's put two blocks for the hands, one for each hand. And let me see if I back up. Can I have a little spot right there for my block? <laughs> OK, all right. So one of the variations that we're going to do is that we're going to do a sideways so that your tail and your eyes are going to be looking at each other. Okay, so let's start with the inhale to cat pose as is customary here. And then exhale to cow pose, bring your chest and heart forward. 
Inhale to cat pose. Exhale to cow pose. Sense the undulation of the whole spine. When you come into the end of the breath, respect the pause. Inhale to cat, also respecting the inhale pause. And once more, exhale to cow pose. And come to table pose. And from your table pose, look over your right shoulder and swing your tail to the right. And then exhale, change sides. Inhale, go right. Exhale, go left. And that's not esoteric, it's just pragmatic. Inhale, right. And exhale, left. One more time, inhale, right. And exhale, left. Return to center, momentarily sit back to kneeling or your version of kneeling if you've had your knees replaced and just notice the energy moving in your body again. You can imagine that you're stimulating circulation and a soak and squeeze process that I spoke about yesterday, soaking and squeezing the inner body. So you're bringing rejuvenation and revitalization to the organ system and so many other systems in your body. So now we're going to be placing one hand forward and it's going to be an asymmetrical cat cow pose. So let's do this. Keep your left hand on the medium block and step your right hand forward on the floor. It's going to feel awkward, I know. And so keep the left arm straight and strong. Acknowledge that there is a twist in your thoracic spine and it's going to the left. So inhale into a cat pose moment. And then exhale to a cow pose moment. See if you can uh, you know, accept the awkwardness and then inhale to cat, noticing the upper back thoracic spine, rib cage. Exhale to cow. Twice more, inhale to cat pose. Keep both hands grounded, exhale to cow pose. I know that it's awkward and asymmetrical. Do it one more time, inhale to cat. Exhale to cow pose. And then press down through your left hand, inhale, return your right hand to its block and then step your left hand forward on the floor. Now you're about to notice that it's probably awkward in one direction more than the other direction. So like double or triple awkward or single awkward. And inhale to cat. Exhale to cow pose. Inhale to cat. Exhale, roll through to cow pose, noticing the asymmetries and even the awkwardness, but without that derailing your efforts to stay in line with your body, your breath, your mind and your heart. Inhale, press into your right hand, return your left hand to table pose. Momentarily sit back to kneeling and observe what's happening across the upper shoulders, the base of the neck, the top of the shoulder blades, what's happening now? We're traveling down through the organ system at this time. Here we were working some with the throat, yep, and also with the 
um, chest, heart, so fifth chakra, fourth chakra. Now we're going to place the elbows on those two blocks instead of the hands. And I'm going to squish my blocks a little closer together. I'd like your blocks to just be shoulder width apart. So I had to squish the, my guest student here. Okay, so place your elbows in the center of the two blocks. Put your hands together so that your fingers can push apart. So the heels of the hands will be separated. And then reach back so that you're going to be on the back of the upper arms. Reach your hips back. You're not going to child's pose. We are taking the hips back more like puppy dog pose. Now in this position, let the head rest between your upper arms, but not hang heavier than that. And let's see if you can have a little undulation of the spine. It's like you inhale, a little bit of cat pose. And exhale, a little bit of cow pose. Inhale, a little bit of cat pose. And exhale, a little bit of cow pose. So the spine is coming into extension. Do it three times more, please. So we're trying to get some mobility into the upper back, chest and shoulders. Of course, the whole spine, but we're really focusing on the upper back right here and the shoulders. So the next time that you complete that in cow pose, then shift your body weight forward, place your forearms on the block so you're like as if you're in table pose. Keeping the arms where they are, now inhale, lift your knees and come to plank pose on your elbows, on your blocks. Reach through the crown of your skull forward. Notice the strength that is needed here is the strength of mind, strength of breath. Yes, the strength of the body. You may notice what you think of as your core muscles, but also your abdominal muscles, your shoulder muscles. So breathe in. And then exhale, touch the knees lightly down and shift backwards one more time to this kind of puppy dog prayer pose position. and then shift yourself forward enough that you can bring yourself back to kneeling. So walk your knees forward towards the blocks and then come into kneeling and see again what's happening. Where is there aliveness, energy? Where do you feel the sponge has been soaked and squeezed and soaked and squeezed? We're going to keep the two blocks but come up to standing in Prasarata Padottanasana. If you had a blanket for your knees, you might want to remove it. So you take a wide stance, please, and come down to Prasarata Padottanasana. Place your hands on your blocks. Now with the two legs straight and steady, let's inhale to cat pose here. So you might notice your lower back stretching in this cat pose. Let that be nourishing. Exhale to cow pose spine here. Try to bring your heart forward beyond your upper arms. Of course, some of you are noticing your hamstrings. So inhale to cat. Exhale to cow pose. Once more, inhale to cat. Use a smooth breath cycle. You might picture the inhale as a time where you're soaking the inner body and the exhale as a time when you're squeezing. Just to give yourself a sense that it's rhythmic. 
and return to a like a table pose spine. And now I'd like you to take your right toes just slightly out to the right. Keep your hands where they are and bend your right knee deeply. You know, inhale, press down, rise up to center, turn the left toes slightly out, exhale, bend to your left. Keeping the hands on the blocks where they are, you're adding a kind of asymmetry and a side bend. Let's inhale up to center. Exhale down to the right. Inhale, rise to center. Exhale down to your left. Inhale, rise, make it smooth in the length of the inhale and the length of the exhale, the length of the movement corresponds. Once more, inhale up to center. Exhale, glide down to your left, last one. Inhale, rise up. Please make the feet parallel again. And now I'd like you to walk your hands over towards your right ankle. So take the left hand under to hold the right ankle or to hold your foot, or you can wrap your yoga strap around your foot to hold your strap. Take the left hand on the right hand. I'm sorry, right hand on the left hand. And rotate your spine to the right. So there's a little twist and a little side bend and a lot of forward bend. So let's imagine in the twist that you're rotating your left rib cage towards your right leg. In fact, you can even think of it as you're rotating from the back of your left rib cage towards your right leg. So much more a sense of being guided from the back side rather than pulling from the front side. And holding on to your ankle or your strap as well as you can, start bending your left knee to the left so that you're going to increase the feeling of the opening of the left mid to lower back, upper back. And then inhale, rise up to center with your legs. And let's rock to center like a pendulum on a clock coming down to center. Walk over to the other ankle so your right hand can hold your left ankle, left hand on your right hand, or use your yoga strap, please. And at first, just enjoy the twist. So we're taking the right rib cage, the back of the rib cage towards the left leg. And I do want you to sense that you're being guided like more from the back rather than pulling more from the front. So we do associate, associate the adrenal glands with the third chakra. And try to sense the breath smoothing out the rhythm of the adrenals. And as if there were like a kind or loving hand on the right rib cage, encouraging the twist to come around not that you are pulling yourself from the front. And then bend your right knee any amount that you're comfortable doing so you can reach into your right side waist, right lower back, mid back, upper back. And then press down through your right heel. Inhale up to center. And exhale, glide to center like the pendulum on the clock. Walk your hands up to your knees. Please rise up to standing and turn your toes out and come into your jazz dance warm up pose. Okay. 
Okay. So now you were you were inverted there for many of you with the torso. Now we are more upright. So there's another layer of soaking and squeezing that's kind of like the hourglass, turning it upside down and then turning it again. So we're upright. Let's glide a little bit left and right. So being inverted from time to time is really helpful for the flow of circulation and the, the shift that it provides to the organs. It's one reason why headstand and shoulder stand are considered to be like the king and queen of the yoga poses. Headstand being considered more the masculine and shoulder stand more the feminine of those two. That's not my lore, that's coming from my studies in the yoga tradition. So when we're going side to side here, start to straighten the left leg and let the left arm dangle. So you've got your energy over here and then glide it back, switch. So you know that you've got your body weight in your left arm and left leg. Let's exhale and we go down to one side and inhale when you're coming up. And see if you can notice when you're changing the arm position, it's not just that we're changing it to be artistic, but I want you to sense that right now when you're coming up, where is the action of the belly and it's transferring over to the other side. It's not that one side of the belly is working exclusively, but they are transferring responsibilities as you go right to left. So start thinking about that in terms of the organs that we have two of. So two adrenals, two kidneys, but also most of us in the reproductive system, we have right and left, we have two. Two ovaries, two testes. Some of us don't have all the organs anymore. I know some of you have had life events and you've had to make some choices and decisions. And we're gonna go one more time right and one more time left. So last time to the left. And press back up to center and rise up to standing. Come to mountain pose, please, and stand really still, noticing, okay, what's happening now energetically? We're going to work mostly in the lower portion of the organ system right now. So down in the pelvis, of course, you're going to feel your muscles and bones too, but I'd like you to take a blanket from the storage fold, fold it in half, place that across your mat. If you have a knee replacement, one or two, so either only one or both, we're going to place the shins on the blanket and the knee will be so that the kneecap is forward of the blankets. And then place your hands on your blocks and please step your right foot forward, keeping the left foot back. Because we're up high on the blankets, let's put the blocks up on the high setting, on the tall setting like this. Okay, so in this position, this is called Anjane Asana and you do have your hips forward, coming forward. So the left shin should be supported behind you. And I hope it's also pretty comfortable for you to tuck the left toes under back there because you're going to need your left foot to navigate. We're going to be going up and down a little bit. Okay, so invite the hips to come forward, press down into both arms and use your cat pose spine. And then exhale and glide your hips back and bring your heart forward like a cow pose spine. Lift your left knee, straighten your right leg. Now inhale, use your cat pose spine and slowly lower your left shin back down. Okay, 
and then exhale, push back and glide back. Bring your heart forward. Inhale, cat pose spine, lower your left shin down. Exhale, cow pose spine, glide back slowly, bring your heart forward. Once more. And exhale to glide back. Bring the heart forward, gaze forward. Now let's come down to Anjane Asana. You can use the cat pose to help you descend. Glide your heart forward, hips forward. Come up to your fingertips, please. Root down into your fingertips and arms. So the strength you're using in the arms, I want you to, to use that to help you lift in the lower belly. Yeah. So we aren't collapsing into the right hip. You can glide the right thigh bone forward, but don't let the pelvis feel like it's sort of darkening the whole hip joint, right? Because there'd be, wouldn't be like the, the round part of the hip socket hasn't just rested on the top of the femur there. Okay, good. And now straighten your left leg and your right leg. Pivot your left heel to the floor. Watch out for your cat. And inhale up to triangle pose. So we put the block on tall for this triangle pose this morning. I'd like you to press firmly down into that block. I hope that it's a stable sort of block that you own. Energize both legs. Move the tailbone firmly down. And sweep your left arm, <clears throat> excuse me, past your left ear. And see if you can put your mind down in the pelvis in the second chakra, the organs of reproduction, the organs of procreation. Can you send the breath down to be a source of nourishment there? Most of us at this point in life, we've discovered how important the hormones are to our mental and physical health. We breathe into the lower pelvis, the lower belly with respect for that. Then breathe into your left kidney, left side waist and the left adrenal gland. Now inhale, raise your left arm, make the spine a little bit straighter and lay the left arm back behind you and come up into your heart, lungs, the thymus, an organ in the center of the chest, thymus gland, I should say. And then exhale and rotate down so your left hand can also find the block. Pivot your left heel up. And as you lightly touch your left shin to the block, uh, to the blanket, excuse me, step your right foot back without hitting your cat in the head and step your left foot forward without standing on the cat's tail. You have a, an utter sense of safety right there, don't you? You just... <laughs> Move these parts. Okay, Anjane Asana. So with the right shin back now and the chest and heart forward, there you go. Place both hands on the blocks and let's inhale to cat pose. Tuck the right toes under, exhale, reach your hips back, glide your chest and heart forward like cow pose. Okay, inhale. Lowering down to Anjane Asana.
And exhale, gliding back to Parjvottanasana, where the chest and heart are also going to come forward. When we inhale to cat pose to come down, one reason we're doing this in cat pose is that as you're gazing back and down like that, you're kind of reorganizing how the psoas, pelvis, and thigh bone are working together. And then exhale, glide your hips back. You come into cow pose. And inhale, cat pose. And one more time, inhale, come down to the cat pose part of this. So we're gonna stay in Anjane Asana for a few breath cycles. Walk your fingertips up to the blocks, root down, lift your heart. Yeah. There's your right psoas. Other hip flexors too. Now press down into your left heel, slowly straighten your right leg, straighten your left leg, place the block where you're gonna want it for your left hand. And as you pivot the right heel, please come into triangle pose, Trikonasana. And sweep your right arm past your right ear. Allow for there to be a side curve to this pose that's one reason we have the block so tall is that the torso is side curving. Bring your attention down into the lower pelvis, deep in the pelvis, the organs of reproduction. Keeping the breath smooth, remind yourself there is a soaking and squeezing that goes on and bring your awareness up to the right kidney and the right adrenal gland. And let's think mostly here of the soaking. So you want to expand the right rib cage on the inhale. And tone the deep low belly, mid belly, upper belly with the exhale. And then raise your right arm up. Triangle pose is a little more linear now. Lengthen your spine and add a little back bend with your right arm, whatever amount your chest and heart can do. So really the thoracic spine has to be willing to make the rotation to the right. And then let's exhale and lower down. Look for the two blocks, pivot your right heel up, touch the left shin, uh, sorry, right shin to the blanket, and then step your left shin back to the blanket. And come back to kneeling. You can tuck the toes of your feet under. So you've got the toes curled under. And for me, some of you know this about me, that's a really big stretch for my toes. Rest on the shins. And then using the blankets for support, drop your heels to the floor and come into Uttanasana. Now, 
Shift your hands to your hips, rise up to standing and step over your two blankets and place your heels on the blanket so you can come down to squat. Now I do have to move this little guy. Let's see. Let me go this way. Alrighty. Still comfy. All right, so if you put these two blocks in front of you like this, I'm going to ask you to check that you trust that your knees can come to these two blocks. So I just picked up my heels off of the blankets and then you've got the toes tucked under. So the toes are doing this little deal behind you. And so I want you to, to check that you have your knees can be supported and then you also know that your heels can be supported. So. We're going to be going from squatting. This is called malasana. We won't do this forever. So for those of you who hate it, you know, do your best. Um, but when we come up to this malasana, you have the pelvis at the lowest point from the torso's perspective. Bring the breath down into the pelvis and the region of the second chakra. Now we're gonna roll forward. So reach the arms forward, roll your knees forward. You're gonna come over the toes, pick up the heels and touch the knees. So this is also called toe balance and can be done without the blocks, right? So you will be levitating the knees above the floor. It's called toe balance and the low belly does draw in. So you're not arching the spine here. And inhale, raise your arms. We're not arching the spine. We are arching the upper back, I should say that, but we're not arching the lower back. You know, exhale, roll back to Malasana. Squeeze, take the arms down. And then inhale, roll forward. And exhale, roll back to Malasana. Squeeze the low belly. Inhale, roll forward with the knees, go up with the torso. Maybe you come up to toe balance and you don't touch the blocks. And then exhale, roll back, place your heels on the blankets, curl down. Some of you might not need the blankets for your heels for squatting. I do. So I'm giving you as an advantage, a couple of supports. And then last time, exhale, roll down to Malasana, squeeze the low belly. And then use your blocks to raise your hips up and come into Uttanasana, step your feet forward of the blankets. If you don't need the blocks, you can place your hands on the floor. And then shift your hands to your hips. Rise up to standing. Okay, and let the energy, you're gonna feel this movement down, the circulation going back down through the legs. Okay, let's bring it to the upper back now. So going from the second chakra to the fourth. So what I'd like you to do here is take these two blankets if you have them, or you can use a bolster. We're gonna be doing a little back bend over the blankets. You can put a block there to support yourself. Have another block at the ready if you're gonna need it. You will know soon. Okay, so lie down over your blanket. Let's place the two blankets and then put the block please on the medium setting to start. And take the arms out in a T-shape. It's my hope that your shoulders will drop down on the back side of the blanket and that at the solar plexus right here, that the, the pancreas, the stomach, the diaphragm, the digestive fire will remember to flow downwards. Right, the, the food is digested here and it's sent downstream. So from the solar plexus down towards the belly button, let this region of the back and the front of the spine relax. And then arms in a T-shape.
So use the breath to send a nourishing message like you're inhaling gratitude or appreciation for these reproductive organs, the digestive organs, the kidneys, the adrenals, and the exhale is to release tension, stress, the habit of busyness or distraction. Three more breath cycles, please. Okay, now keeping the right knee bent, stretch your left leg straight out. Raise your arms up towards the ceiling and inhale the arms overhead. And then exhale, raise your arms up, curl your head forward, reach up, and we're gonna twist into Marichyasana. Go ahead and place your hand on the blankets if you need to because they're there or use the floor if you can find that as suitable. So a little pressure down in the lower pelvis and abdomen. That's the reproductive organs. A little toning across the abdomen and the solar plexus. So pancreas, broaden the back of the waist, so kidneys and adrenals and rotate through your heart, giving a squeeze to the thymus. And then inhale, rotate around to face forward, raise your arms up. And exhale, take the upper back to the blankets, arms overhead. Now bend your left knee, take the right leg out straight. Raise both arms up to the ceiling first and then overhead, deep breath in. And then exhale, raise your arms, raise your head, roll up and twist to your left. And think of the organ system that you are soaking and squeezing, nourishing, rejuvenating. And then rotate to face forward, inhale, raise your arms up. And exhale, roll down. Arms overhead. And then bend both knees, take the arms out again in a T-shape. Take the block that's under the head and put it down on the flat setting. And then turn your head as far as you comfortably can to your right. If you need the block to be a little bit higher, you're welcome, of course, to put it back up. When you turn your head to your right, my hope is that you're gonna feel the left side of the neck, the left shoulder. We're going back up to the, from the heart now to the thyroid gland. So thymus to thyroid. And 
and roll your head to center and then turn your nose as far as you comfortably can to your left. And rotate your head back to center and see if it's comfortable for you to take the block out from under your head. So now the chin and the throat are open. If you'd like, you can stretch the legs out straight. Now to release from a pose like this, what I like to do is bend one elbow, let's say the right one, and put your hand behind your head. And then bend the left knee, bring your left arm up to your torso and roll onto your right side. Then bend both knees and press up to sitting without squishing the kittens. Okay. So now we'll do one inversion. We did this a couple days ago. And let me turn my blankets around. This is a way of having an inversion. For those of you for whom you have said that your neck is, by the way, we're not going all the way up to this inversion. Some of you have said your neck is really difficult in bridge pose. So we're gonna have the shoulders here. And then we have two blocks for the feet. Let me just scoot myself to my left because I see that my mat is occupied. Okay, two blocks for the feet for sure. What you might have is two extra blocks that you can use and you'll see how to do that in a few moments. So I'd like you to put your shoulders on the blanket. It is important that your shoulders are on this blanket because then you're gonna put your feet on the blocks and we go up. Now I've got this one extra block in case you have only one, you put it like this under the pelvis and you tuck the shoulders under, clasp the hands and this block here is for the wrists and the other two blocks are for the feet. So in this bridge pose, you don't have very much neck flexion because we put the two blankets. I do want you to make good use of the time that you're here and press very strongly down with your shoulders and your wrists against the blankets and the block. And the other two feet being on those blocks is because blocks are more stable than blankets, but those blocks are now placing you so that your heels are about the same height as your shoulders relative to the floor. So this is a way of having some inverted quality because the hips are right now higher than the heart. You are getting some blood supply back towards the heart, from the heart back towards the throat, towards the brain, pineal and pituitary. But this has a lot less neck flexion because we elevated the shoulders, the wrists and the feet. Please keep squeezing the shoulders down. Use the shoulder blades wisely. And since you do have a block there that was for your wrists, now what you can do is lower your hips down to that block. Take the arms overhead. and let yourself slide very, very slowly. 
So the place you were on the blankets, let's imagine that the blanket is enough tension to catch the skin of the upper back and to draw it down away from your head as you're going very slowly off the blankets backwards. The block that your hips are on is going to start to feel like it's about to tip. So please take care of yourself. We are massaging the skin of the upper back with this blanket as we go down. And there may be a place for you where you realize, oh, my block is going to tip or what's oh, not going to tip. I'm going to be all right. And you can make the changes and accommodations that you need to make. As you're sliding down, the back of the neck should get longer. And there's going to be a certain point where you've got your mid to lower back on the blankets and you'll have to scoot yourself backwards until your hips and pelvis are on the blankets. And then there you are in a basic supported bridge pose with your hips on the blankets. You can use one foot to put the blocks aside and then let's pick up the hips and slide the blankets down to go under, <laughs> under the back of your hamstrings. Sorry, kitty. Sorry to disturb you there. So the, the two blankets are now going to go under the back of the hamstrings for Shavasana. And this is a very, very important Shavasana. So please make yourself comfortable and then promptly come to resting. And just imagine the like whatever way you see this it can be a cartoon image in your mind it could be your scientific studies just imagine the organs the glands they're being replenished right now so not only are they not being drained by you being in yoga class instead of being somewhere else like a crazy computer marathon. It's not just that they're not being drained, they are being replenished. Allow your mind to really deeply, deeply rest.
and the mind is resting, let's practice observing how your body is taking care of itself. The larger intelligence or nature, you can think of it this way, is recalibrating, re-rhythming, rejuvenating you. nothing for you to do explicitly right now so the inner process will continue however it's beneficial if you don't move your mind off to thinking or planning Allow the rest replenishing to go a few degrees more deeply now. The mind heavier with relaxation and stillness.
Now while keeping the body at rest, your mind restful, just allow a slightly deeper breath in. Pick up your hands and rub them together. And place the palms over your eyes. And then we go up to the top of the head and the hair, down alongside the sides and down over the body. And bend your knees. <laughs> Roll to your side. Return to your seat for meditation. We're having a lengthy demonstration of Shavasana here, but we're going to meditate. Invite your mind to be very still. I began class with a reflection of being present to everything that is, including the agonies and the beauties. Let your mind rest in stillness.
and resting in the stillness, you might observe the pulsation of your body, a rhythmic feeling that the heartbeat is there. It can be felt as a pulsation in the entire body. Please bring your hands together at your heart. Thank you very much for being here, everyone. Namaste. I'm gonna come up to say Hi to you, and I'll bring one yoga student with me. Hi. You want to come up and see the peoples? Oh. Mm -hmm. I have to get my seat. Yeah, hi. So do you want to say hi or be shy? You can, it's always your choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the girl kitty. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see the people? I know you like to watch the screen. Yeah. So happy for all of you to have had some yoga. She can't see you individually there. She doesn't know what's going on. But yeah. You want to go down? Where? How about some lap time? There you go. Okay, a couple questions. Sadie has a question. Let me see. Okay, great. So other than the position of the body, what's the difference between Shavasana and meditation? Okay, it's a courageous question. I'll spend a few minutes on it and then uh, then I'll have to go because I'm going to teach a webinar. So in Shavasana, we are concentrating on rehearsing. We're practicing the corpse pose. So we're, we're practicing letting go of everything we identify with. We don't say this as yoga teachers every time we're teaching it because people would stop coming to class. <laughs> hasn't been advertised that this is what this is, but we are practicing letting go, rehearsing, and then really not attaching, not attaching, not attaching. And then 
that deep restfulness that's happening to the body can feel meditative. When we sit up in meditation, then we have a couple different intentions. There's multiple forms of meditation. So one, you wanna to go to the floor? There you go. One might be that when you sit, then you're, you're practicing being in the witness. And when you're upright, rather than shedding everything, you're coming up and you can sense yourself as the witness. You are all that is and all that has been and all that will be. But as the sense of self has been shifted to the capital S self. So you're, you're sitting with more alertness, more awareness of that. Whereas Shavasana, you're shedding, then you come up to sense what we all are, that thing that we are. But also in meditation, sometimes we practice noticing which vrittis, which thoughts are coming, what the ripples are, which samskaras have come, and we can practice actively burning the seeds of those thoughts. This is a technical term. To burn the seeds is used in the text. It means that we're burning the seed of the thought so that even if it got planted in the ground, it cannot grow itself. So that is a practice that we do with some active intention in meditation. In Shavasana, we might feel like those things are falling away, but how easily when we come back to our life and we orient to us, how easily those thoughts can come back on. They can kind of pick themselves back up. So these are some distinctions, Sadie. I, I hope it's a helpful response. For myself, when when my life is balanced and my practice is nourishing, I don't need a long, long shavasana and I prefer to have a longer time for meditation. Frequently when I was in my yoga teacher training, the teacher would have us, there's like a hundred people. This was in the US actually with a Western teacher and the people would be lying down in the shavasana. And I just got this instinct after six or seven minutes, I had to sit up. So I would be sitting up in meditation and Really nobody else was sitting up except for one other person would sit up. Like somehow he also got this signal to sit up and meditate and we didn't stay in Shavasana. We didn't know each other, um, but that other person was Chris Canaris. That's how we got to know each other. Everybody else was lying down. <laughs> we, were the, we were the only two sitting up. So that's, it's not that we were looking at each other but you have a sense that there was a need to be in meditation, not in the Shavasana. And I just noticed that the teacher was sitting and I was sitting and Chris across the way, he was also sitting. So um, for me, Shavasana is shedding this identification with the body and meditation is being in the meditative state as much as possible immersed and aware of the preciousness of life. So this is my reply. I'm going to lead a webinar at noon and it's not okay to eat during the webinars. <laughs> so I have to go get my um, food resources here now. Um, maybe I'll see some of you at the webinar too. Thank you very much for being here. Namaste. You're welcome, Linda.